Good morning, Year 2, and welcome to Tuesday's Literacy. I hope you're ready to find out some of the features of instructions, and we're going to have a good look. And we're also going to listen to one of my favourite stories, which is Mr Wolf's pancakes, because Mr Wolf isn't sure how to make his pancakes, and no one wants to help him. But we're going to help him by the end of the week. We're going to write him a brilliant set of instructions. But before we can do that, we need to find out how to do it. So we need to find out all the important things that are in there. So let's get ourselves cracking ready for our lesson and i hope you can see my screen because we're going to get going so these are all the things we're going to get up to today we are going to learn the new spelling rule we're going to listen to the story of mr wolf's pancakes and we're going to look at some different sets of instructions and we're going to label them we're going to think about all the different things that are inside of them Okay, these are all the things that you're going to need. You're going to need your brain, definitely that literacy brain, please. And you're going to need your whiteboard and pen today. So please go and grab that too. Okay, so this is our spelling rule. This week's spelling rule is the UL sound spelled as L-E at the end of words. Um, we only use that alternative sound though, that alternative spelling L-E, when it is a consonant. Um, but not all consonants, this is important. So I want you to have a look at the list of letters that's down the bottom of my screen. Only when it has one of those consonants is when we use the L-E ending. So bottle, for example, if I sound it out, b o t -o, it has that t, t sound, which means I need to use the L-E ending, okay? So I've just got some L-E words here that I thought you guys might have seen already before. So obviously we've got bottle, we've got little, we've got purple and tickle. I wonder if you know any others that end in L-E. So I want you to pause your video here and write any down on your whiteboard that you know, please. Right, did you have any? I couldn't think of that many, but I have thought of some because we need it for our next few job. So well done if you did think of any different ones. So this is a job that I've made for you and you've got two alternative spellings to think about. Now remember, you're thinking about the middle sound. If the middle sound is one of the consonants on that list, then you need to change it to an L-E ending. If it's not on that list, then you can think it's going to be a different spelling, which is going to be the other spelling that I would have given you. OK, so on your whiteboard, you're going to write down the correct spelling and I'm going to read the word for you. So the first one is giggle. Giggle. So remember, sound it out if you want to. Think about what that middle sound is. Does that middle sound land on that list? G, E, G, O. Ooh, I'm looking on that list. Is there a g, g on there? If there is, remember, it's going to be that L-E spelling at the very end. Write the right one on your whiteboard. Okay, next one then. The next word is bubbles. So again, if you want to sound it out, look at that list. Is there a b, b on there for that middle sound? If there is, it's going to have that alternative ending and write it on your whiteboard. Now the next one is camel. Okay, so again, sound it out. Um, if it's not on that list of letters though, it's gonna be the different spelling. So think about that one and write it on your whiteboard for me. Remember, there's only two choices. You're only ever gonna use that one or the other spelling. And the last one is apple. So again, sound it out. If that middle sound is on that list, it's gonna be the L-E. If it's not on the list, it's gonna be the other spelling. Right, let's go back and have a look through them then. So giggle, you should have had the L-E spelling for that one. Bubbles, you should have had the L-E-S. There's an S on the end of that one, but you should have had L-E-S for that one. Camel, um, the mm sound, the middle sound isn't actually on there, um, which means it's going to be the other spelling I've given you, which is E-L. So camel is spelled with an E-L. And apple, again, is L-E, because P is on that little list of consonants. So well done if you got all of those right. Now, I wonder if you had some delicious pancakes. Give me a thumbs up if you had delicious pancakes. I bet you did. It was pancake day last week. Um, and Mr. Wolf, I'm just going to move myself out the way. Mr. Wolf, he isn't sure how to make his pancakes and he needs our help. So today we're going to be looking at the features of instructions. Um, and at the end of the week, we're going to be writing our very own set to help him because not many people wanted to help him. Um, but we're going to find out that in just a second because we're going to 
listen to the story now of Mr. Wolf's Pancakes. So hopefully you should be able to see my screen and Mr. Wolf's Pancakes is going to pop up and you're going to be able to listen to the story. Mr. Wolf's Pancakes by Jan Fernley with music by Barry Gibson read by me, Nigel Plater. One day, Mr. Wolf was feeling hungry. He fancied some pancakes. Yum, yum, he said, licking his lips at the thought of a big pile of fresh, delicious pancakes. Mr. Wolf had never made pancakes before, so he took his big recipe book down off the shelf and looked inside. But wolves can't read very well, and Mr. Wolf had trouble making sense of it. So he went to get some help from his neighbour. He called on Chicken Licken, who lived nearby. Please, can you help me read this? he asked. No, said Chicken Licken, slamming the door in Mr. Wolf's face. Bang! <coughs> Mr. Wolf. He sat down, slowly read the book, and worked out what he needed all by himself. Mr. Wolf looked in his cupboard for the ingredients, but he couldn't find anything he needed. I'll go to the shop, he decided, and he settled down to write a list. But wolves aren't very good at writing. So Mr. Wolf called on Wee Billy Winky. You're very clever, said Mr. Wolf. Can you help me write my shopping list, please? No, said Wee Willy Winky. Go away. He slammed his door. Bang. There's no need to be like that, said Mr. Wolf quietly. Mr. Wolf sat down and tried very hard with his writing until he had made his shopping list all by himself. It's good that Mr. Wolf now, kept going. he needed to count his money to make sure he had enough. But wolves aren't very good at counting. So he went to the gingerbread man for some help. He doesn't like gingerbread man wants to talk to him. Can you help me count my money, please? He asked politely. No, I'm too busy to bother with you said the gingerbread man, slamming his door back. So poor Mr. Wolf had to sit down and count his money. It took him a long time, and he had to check it three times before it was right. And he did it all by himself. Mr. Wolf needed a basket to carry his shopping. So he called on Little Red Riding Hood. May I borrow your basket? He asked very nicely. I'm not lending my basket now. Said Little Red Riding Hood. He's being that very kind, and not many people are being very kind back. So Mr. Wolf set off to the shop without a basket. I'll manage, he said. Mr. Wolf went to the shop. He looked at his list, remembered what he needed, counted out his money, and carried the eggs, milk, and flour home. All that looks tricky. Himself. Now it was time to make the pancakes. But wolves aren't very good at cooking. So Mr. Wolf called on the three little pigs. Oh, I'll just the Can you help me cook my pancakes? I'll share them with you, he said kindly. Chorus of the pigs slamming their doors. Bang! 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 Oh no, they all shut the door on Mr. Wolf. Mr. Wolf felt sad because nobody wanted to help him. I bet he did feel sad. Mr. Wolf went home and started to make the pancakes all 
all by himself. Soon there was a huge pile of... <laughs> He's got one stuck on a picture. to try their luck. Hmm, is that so kind? They knocked on Mr. Wolf's door. Give us some of your pancakes, said hmm. the rotten lot. Why should I give any to you, said Mr. Wolf. Not one of you would help me. We'll help you eat them, replied Mr. Wolf's neighbours nastily. Anyway, we're not going away until you give us some. Oh no, that isn't kind. What do you think he's going to do? Oh, very well then, he sighed. You had better come in. Mr. Wolf opened the door wide and whoosh! His greedy neighbours rudely pushed him aside and dashed down the hall. Mr. Wolf shook his head, shrugged his shoulders, and followed them into the kitchen. And when they were all in, Oh, Mr. Wolf, I wasn't expecting that. Snippity, snappity. That was the end of his uncle. Oh my goodness, he still had room for his pancakes. And then, with his bulging tummy not <laughs> quite full, Mr. Wolf sat down to eat. <laughs> he won in the end, Mr. Wolf. Okie dokie, right then. I'm going to get us back onto our original screen. So then, we've listened to Mr. Wolf's pancakes now. And before we can actually help him, because we are going to help him this time, we're going to help him by writing some brilliant instructions. Before we can do that, we're actually going to need to have a look at what a good set looks like. Um, and this is one about Polyjuice Potion. Now, I wonder if anyone's watched Harry Potter. If you have watched Harry Potter, give me a wave. I love Harry Potter. And here is a set of instructions that tell me how to make Polyjuice Potion. OK, and this is a set of really good instructions. So what I want you to do is pause the screen here and give them a read. Um, if you're thinking, wow, that's loads of reading, I will read it out loud for you. So listening is cranked up and try and follow it with your pointing finger for me. So how to make Polyjuice Potion. Witches and wizards, this potion is for you. Have you ever wanted to change into another person? Even just for an hour or two? If so, this delicious potion is the one you will need. Ingredients. A piece of the hair from the person you would like to change into. Lace wing flies, flux weed, knot grass, horn of bicorn, boom slang skin. Mm, haven't heard of those things before. Now here's the method which tells us how we actually do it. So number one, first heat a large cauldron over a flame and add three tablespoons of fluxweed. Two, next slowly add two large bundles of knotgrass and wait for the mixture to turn to a light blue colour before continuing. Three, then release the lacewing flies into the cauldron and quickly put the lid on to stop them from escaping. Keep the lid on for five minutes. After that, take off the lid and check the colour. It should now be dark brown and look like mud. Now, carefully grate the entire bloom slang skin into the, into the cauldron and listen out for a hiss as loud as a snake's. Six. 
Next, add the horn of bicorn. The hissing should stop once it's added because the potion is nearly ready. Seven, finally, carefully drop in the hair of the person that you would like to change into. This will change the color of the potion again to match that person. The brighter the color, the tastier the potion. Enjoy becoming another person for the day and be careful not to tell anyone who you really are. Wow, that is a really easy recipe into it to um, follow. That they've written those instructions brilliantly and they've included lots of different things that we also need to try and include. So we're going to break it down now. Um, so I'm just going to pop back on. Here I am. And we're going to talk them through together. So at the very top, I've put some arrows. And the first arrow is the title. You need to make sure you've got a title for your instructions so that people know what they're going to make. The next part is the introductory sentence. They're normally a few sentences long and they try and include a question. Um, so this one has actually got ooh, two questions. So it says, have you ever wanted to change into another person, even just for an hour or two? So two questions in there. And that really helps to entice the reader in. So if the reader thinks that you're talking just to them. And you also need to include a what you will need list, a set of ingredients. OK, now the next part is the method. And there's lots of different things to put in this one. I think I'm in the way of one of them, actually. I am. I'm in the way of bossy verbs. And they are they are bossy verbs because they tell us how to do something. OK, uh, things like put and mix and drop. They are my bossy verbs. Now, also, oh, you have numbered steps, which makes it really easy to follow. You've got those things called adverbs that we learned about yesterday. It tells us how to do something. So this one, number five, says now carefully grate. We're going to need to be careful because otherwise we can get hurt on the grater. We need to make sure we're doing that really carefully, which is why we've used carefully. And there's also time words, um, which tells us the order to do things in. So it says number one is first and number seven is finally. And then the last little thing, if you wanted to add this in, you can do is a little conclusion, which is a final finishing sentence. So that is what a really good one looks like. And it's got all of the features. OK, lots of different things that we need to try and include in our own writing. So, oh, I think I'm in the way again. I'm going to pop away. I think these are all the features that you need. So I want you to have a good look, have a read. So pause the screen here, read them aloud. OK, I've given you some good examples of the adverbs and time words and bossy verbs. So I want you to read it now. Take a picture so it's going to store it into your brain. OK, and then we are gonna get on with having a good look at a set of instructions ourselves to label. Right, okay, so here is your jobs for today. Um, the first job, if you are a one chili challenger, you are gonna be looking for the title, numbered steps, a what you will need list, and you're gonna look out for any adjectives, any describing words. So four things for the one chili challenge person, okay? Now, you, I put a little Victoria sponge up at the top, one of my favorite cakes, because you're gonna be looking at a set of instructions for how to make a yummy Victoria sponge cake, okay? So if you're a one chili challenge person, you need to underline or put a circle around the title, numbered steps, what you will need list and adjectives, okay? If you're a two chili challenge, you're looking for the introduction, question, time words, bossy verbs and adjectives. Remember those bossy verbs are things like put and mix and drop and cut, things like that telling us exactly what to do. Uh, they're not messing around with us. Remember those time words are things like first, next, after that. And if you're a three chili challenge person, then you are looking for the introduction, time words, bossy verbs, adjectives and adverbs. You might want to pause the screen now so that you can write down the things that you're looking for. That would be a quite a good thing because you might forget some of them otherwise. OK, right. Once you've written down things that you're looking for, then here's where we actually find the instructions. So here they are. OK, um, I've split them over two pages. But what I have done is put a copy onto the school website as well. So you can always find it there, too, if you want it on one big page. So this is the top of the instructions where it's got the title, the introduction and the what you will need list. OK, so that's here. 
And on my next slide, I've got the, whoa, the long method. Okay, so you're going to need to pause me on both screens, okay, and see if you can find those things. It's going to probably be, it will be probably more helpful if you could download the copy so that you can print it out. But if not, see if you can find those things for me, okay. So two screens to have a look at. So pause me here. Oh, pause me here. And then pause me here again once you've done the first screen. All right. So I hope you enjoyed doing those jobs. Um, and tomorrow we're going to be planning our very own set of instructions together. There's not a reading session again. So it's just reading those books, read my ink sessions. And please, please really trying to be a brilliant reader at home. What could you do to challenge yourself? So. I look forward to seeing all those literacy jobs you highlighting and finding all the features of those um, instructions texts and I'll see you again tomorrow. See you later.